Well, thank you, Larry Platt, and thank you for making this possible. I've been hearing about these sessions. I cannot believe how many of you are here, and I think it's awesome that you care and you're here. And I want to say one thing about um, that Maria Sanchez, because I love Sherelle Parker as much as anybody in the whole wide world, but when Maria Sanchez first came to Philadelphia, Ed Rendell called me up and said, you need to support this woman and write a check. I didn't even know her, and that was 20 years ago, and I'm loyal, but this is an awesome woman, too, so please not forget that. And my favorite mayor's here, and if he was a woman, he's who I'd really be pushing for, but <laughs> he's many things, but he's not that. So, Terrell, um, what's the matter? So, first of all, I want to thank you for your service uh, in this community, and I really want to thank you as a woman for running for mayor and sticking your neck out there and, um, you know, representing um, so many of us that have long wished that we could have a woman mayor. And I guess my question to you is, having been in public service, you know, your career, you're getting into a situation here where you would be CEO of a very complex organization that's gotten much more complex with everything that's happening in the world today and in our city. And then, you know, it requires a unique set of skills in terms of leadership. Leadership's the key word, and that's what we really desperately need. And somebody that's going to energize us, motivate us, and bring us together more than anything else. And just love to hear, you know, you describe your style and what kind of a mayor would you be and how, how would you get us, you know, back on the happy trail of success that we've had in the past. So first, let me just start by saying good evening uh, to each of you, to the citizen and to the distinguished uh, panel here today. Thank you all so very much for taking the opportunity to be here and to participate uh, in uh, democracy uh, actually in action. I, I respect you all a great deal. Um, I am running for mayor of this city for, for three reasons. I think my lived life experience, my professional experience, and actually government and politics or running government, I, I don't know, it's the only place in the world where people think that they could do it even if they've never done it before. <laughs> so some folks think that they don't even have to have an understanding with how to navigate from an intergovernmental perspective. You know, um, you know, our American Rescue Plan revenue comes from the federal government to the local level. Some people were just happy for the money. Well, unless you understand what strings come with government money, that's not good if you can't use the revenue to replace revenue that we lost as a result of COVID. You don't know to ask those kind of questions. Judy, unless you have a level of understanding and experience about how government works. So my lived life experience facing and living, not just because I went, read a white paper. Listen, data-driven, research-based, the best quantitative analysis, time value of money equations you can get, I want to read it. But guess what? Qualitative analysis is important but quantitative is as well. It can stop you from engaging in what I call, I know what's best for you's people policy making. It happened when we saw people attempting to put Philadelphia in a box as it related to community policing and criminal justice reform. During a very difficult time during my tenure in council, I heard people shouting a very popular tone at that time, and those voices were so loud, screaming, defund the police. And some people meant, who would explain later, we really didn't mean literally what we said. We meant invest in X, invest in Y, but there was a core constituency that literally meant they wanted to do that. Well, that was different than what Ms. Johnson and Mr. Brown were saying in the neighborhoods. They were saying, where are the officers walking the beat and riding the bike? Proactively in our commercial quarters, at our recreation centers, building trust as 
guardians, not warriors in our neighborhoods. Judy, leadership is about having the strength and courage to say now, I listen to the noise, but I listen to the people. And they want a comprehensive plan that includes that proposal to put 300 police officers proactively engaged in community policing in neighborhoods across the city. Better lighting. I mean, quality of life, all of a sudden, it became important for people to talk about. But improving commercial corridors, uh, you know, making neighborhoods uh, greener, you know, rehabbing, you know, existing and abandoned housing stocks, that's something that we've always done. So, Sherelle, um, what's the other leadership quality? I didn't believe this until I talked with someone in the business community, and I just said this to another group. You're going to be shocked and surprised that for the first time in my life, I've talked to members of the business community when I said, what's most important to you right now? They said, we have a hope deficit in the city. We need to motivate, inspire, and encourage Philadelphians to have a sense of pride about where we are and make Philadelphia a desirable place that people want to come and do business in. So listen, tax policy was important. Continued reduction of wage, you know, in, 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 in Birch, streamlining, removing red tape, making it more app-based, web-based, interactive. That was extremely important. But the business community, Judy, where they were talking about hope and pride. Paul Levy, I was shocked. So Judy, my lived experience, one, with poverty, understanding addiction, having grew up in the crack cocaine uh, era with anybody who lived during that era, especially if you were in a black community, Keith, that you knew well, nobody was talking about a safe crack house in our community back in the 80s and the 90s, which is why I do not support safe injection sites. People in addiction who I've interacted with have said long-term treatment, long-term housing, long-term care. So the answer to the question is my live life experience, my professional um, experience, and understanding that it is important to motivate, inspire, and encourage Philadelphians to believe again in government because I've done work that people can tangibly see, touch, and feel. They're like Baldwin. You all remember the interview. Baldwin says to the reporter who says they care about civil rights, I can't believe what you say because I see what you do. We're telling people in Philadelphia that we care about them and believe in them, but we haven't put their tax dollars to work in their communities. We've got to change it. I've had some success, and now, Judy, I want to do it across the city. Thank you for that. Uh, my next question is, in terms of the future and uh, dealing with the whole issue of poverty, as we all know, jobs is absolutely key. And bringing jobs here and attracting you know, other organizations to come relocate here and create jobs. Do you have a plan to do that? And can you talk a little bit about what that would be? We can't do that if we don't take care of the core. And the basics are that Philadelphia has to be safer, it has to be cleaner, we want it to be greener, but there has to be economic opportunity for all. If you walk into town now during the week, I know you know that the crowds, minus the pandemic, aren't at the volume that they once were. The energy that we once saw in town, yes, it's beginning to come back because of the outstanding work that Paul Levy Center City District and so many others have done in that area. But we also want those buildings to be filled with firms who choose Philadelphia, who want to come back because they feel the vibrancy and the growth. And if we don't fix those basics first, we're not going to be able to get much of anything else done. Um, how do you grow the economy? How do you put people on the path to self-sufficiency? You can't do it without two essential things, workforce development and public education. I am a certified secondary English teacher by profession. I've talked to some of my educator friends about this, uh, Judy, and not all of them were happy. When you hear me talk about workforce development in our education system, Philadelphia, we don't live in an agrarian society anymore. Our students aren't going to go work the farms for two months. 
nor are they going to Martha's Vineyard and to the shore, not all of them. So why are we not scheduling school using a year-round schedule? Listen, that doesn't just start at 9 a.m. School should be open at 7.30 in the morning. When I want to drop my son off, I have to explain to him, you know, you, you have a, a real working mom. You know, Langston, I, you, we, we can't wait. I, I need to drop you off because I have a meeting in town, and I can't pick you up at 315. So you have to stay in aftercare. What about the parents, Judy, who don't have access to early bird learning and or aftercare? That is economic development. If you want firms to want to move here, not only do you want it safe and clean, but you want to have a friendly environment and one of the best educational systems available for the children of those people who are employed at those firms. In addition to that, out of crisis comes great opportunity. Now, here's the optimist in me. Commonwealth Court just ruled. Josh Shapiro, friend of 20 years, is the governor. Joanna McClinton about to make history. Vincent Hughes in the state senate. 11 plus billion dollar state surplus. Did you see Philadelphia now? Almost a 600, Mr. Mayor, you'd be super happy about this. 660 million dollar fund balance right now. We are in good shape. Now is the time to, local control means nothing without dollars being driven to it, right? Local, local control of, a, of, of the school district. We have to be innovative. We have to work in a collaborative manner, and we have to think about doing things that we've never done uh, before. And that's what we will do, Judy, in order to encourage firms to want to be here. Uh, again, the tax base is extremely important. Lowering of wage, lowering of BERT, you know, removing red tape to make it, you know, web-based, app-based easier. You know, why do I know where Uber is and not the trash truck? Right? I mean, like very, very simple questions. We can find a way to do that, but we will encourage firms to want to be here if we are making our city safer and cleaner and we are investing in our most valuable asset, which is our young people. It's our human infrastructure. So all of that is so true that you say, but the bottom line is how do you make it happen? What do you need to do as mayor to make all those wonderful things you just said come to reality? In, in a minute, you have a minute. Collaboration, thank you, I'll do that, Larry. Collaboration, Judy. When Sherelle Parker's elected mayor, Judy Von Seldenick has to answer the phone. Keith Lee Part, Mayor Michael Nutter, they have to answer the phone. You have to form alliances and build coalitions with people you never thought that you would have to work with in order to be successful. Um, I am so happy that during my experience in Harrisburg, um, because I was forced to work and get things done in an environment that didn't allow me to have a choir behind me advocating for the same thing. So I had to work in a partisan environment with real Republicans, a governor, a House, and a Senate. And I had to deliver big for Philadelphia. Public school funding, sales tax increase, a $2.3 billion transportation bill, that delivered additional funding to SEPTA so that we didn't have to cut service. All of those things happened, Judy, not because Sherelle Parker was great, but because I was smart enough to pick up the phone and know that I had to get people like William Sasso and, and David Cohen and Ryan Boyer and Sam Staten and Joe Ashdale and Pat Eiding and Gillespie to help me do what I needed to do to get the votes to get it Done. And to get buy-in from the private sector, because with all due respect, I don't care if you're the mayor, I don't care if you're the president of city council. If you're in city council, two numbers matter, nine and 12. I don't care how good you are, how good your ideas are. If you can't muster up nine to get what you want to get done, you can't get anything done. And then if the mayor gets cute and you really don't like his idea, you can't just tell him, you got to get 12. 9 and 12, 102 in the House, or either two-thirds. So those relationships with council members. And how do we know you can really do it, Sherelle? I had to work with a Republican speaker and a Republican leader who I agreed to disagree with 99. Point, ivory soap is what, 99.9 .9 or 44% pure? 
99% of the time, I agreed to disagree with this gentleman. He is now a person I would consider to be a friend because he helped me deliver for Philadelphia and not have to come back to you and say I couldn't deliver because the big bad Republicans were in charge. There you go. And that, that was Mike Terzai, right? Um, yes, that, yeah. Let's move on. Thank you for finishing the sentence. I appreciate it. <laughs>